So I have titled this video, What the Maldives is Really Like. And I promise you, as much as this sounds like clickbait, it really isn't. Because in this video, I'm going to explain, well, what it's really like staying in the Maldives. And I mean that in a good way. Like many for so long, the Maldives was at the top of our bucket list, but we just couldn't justify spending the often crazy prices it is to have such a luxury. But during my time at our resort, I reacted to the whole experience in ways I hadn't anticipated and was surprised by what I was surprised at. And so then here we are, full circle. This is Suitcase Monkey trying to explain what it's really like staying in the Maldives. In a way, having a holiday in the Maldives is an odd experience. In one way, there's not much to do. But in another way, there's so much to do. What happens when I sit like this? Or how about this? What happens if I sit here with a straw in my mouth? How long can I stare at this bird for? Because it's luxurious and secluded and special, all of these normal everyday things suddenly become an event. Doing nothing and taking it all in is what you are doing. For example, this view became our morning routine. Just waking up, opening the curtains, making a coffee and basking in tranquility kept us entertained for hours. And then during all of this quiet, when something new happens, it becomes a major happening, like this heron. Or this fish. We also realized after a few days that around 6 p.m. there was always a school of stingrays that would swim past our room as if on cue. This would signal the start of our evening where we were always treated to stunning sunsets each and every night. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. We landed mid-afternoon, already a bit exhausted from the previous seven days we had spent traveling around Sri Lanka. It's only an hour's flight from Colombo, so it felt rude not to stop by before our return flight back to London. I'd strongly recommend you check out our travels in Sri Lanka. It's a beautiful country and the Maldives is a perfect companion for a twin country getaway. Since most holiday makers landing in Male will almost be immediately heading out to another island, the relatively small airport is full of hotel kiosks, all with a designated number that you need to find. Here, your host will welcome you and take you out to the pier, where you can catch your boat or helicopter to your future island of paradise. Our boat ride took around 45 minutes. As we passed front covers of travel brochures, the reality of where we were about to visit finally set in. This is almost as far away from this as you can get. As I looked at my watch, I realized we'd only a few minutes until we should be at our destination. It was at this point that I guessed the blip on the horizon was our home for the next four nights. The Vivanta by Taj Coral Reef. I've linked to the coral reef in the description below for those interested. We were greeted with a wave, a welcome, a customary fruit juice and a cold towel. They'd even arranged for a UK shaped cloud above reception. This really was going the extra mile. It was here that we met Lynn, who, for the next 20 minutes, would show us around the island. Lynn was incredibly welcoming and hospitable, and for probably the first time that I can remember, I was actually interested in the hotel greeting monologue. Normally, this consists of, here is the aircon and here is the safe, while you politely nod along with, ah, the aircon and, ooh, yes, the safe. But here, it was the simple psychology that we had nowhere else to be for the foreseeable future. So this person held all of the information to get the most out of our holiday. Then, for us, it was the introduction to what had been a bucket list item for years. A room over water in the Maldives with the sea lapping at our balcony. Oh, wow. Yeah, please. To just rewind a second, you may have missed something after we walked through the door. 
Asking permission to step inside our room is first-class customer service. It says that the space is ours and immediately creates a sense of home away from home. Asking permission to step inside was just one of the little touches that pushed the whole experience over the edge, even just within our room. For example, as a six foot three man, I have settled with the fact that a towel on a sun lounger will not support my impressively muscular, well-toned bod. But look at this shining example of cotton. And why have the hassle of bringing a table next to you when you have this little pullout? And look at my excitement with this bedside torch going the extra mile. So this torch automatically comes on when you take it I think I'm not too far wrong when I say... That's hours of fun. Indeed. If you'd also like to hear more of a review of this resort, including a frank discussion about price and how to keep costs down when visiting the Maldives, I have made a separate video which I've linked above and below. The other benefit of your room backing into the sea is snorkeling. Getting ready in your own space and then nipping out for a quick swim with the fishes became a daily routine for us with a surprising amount of life just feet from our steps. I prepare you now that I'm about to speak about food for a rather long time. I can only apologize in advance. But it becomes such a focal point of your time in the Maldives, I have to talk about it. This plate here signaled the start of what was to become a beautiful relationship. A relationship between one man and a restaurant. Latitude was the main dining spot at Coral Reef, and I can honestly say it was the best food I have ever had at any hotel ever. As much as I normally love food in the real world, dining in the Maldives is the only real routine you keep about your day. So it becomes the constant around all of that sitting down you still need to do. But also, the quality was outstanding. The selection of food on offer was different every single day, covering every type of international cuisine you can think of. And because we had gone half bored, there was also the added bonus that the more I ate, the cheaper it became. Although the package we'd booked was half bored, we decided to upgrade to all inclusive by paying direct to reception on checkout. However, after having all of this for lunch, following a massive breakfast, we realized it was just too much food and we dropped down again to half board. Again, the staff at reception were incredibly accommodating with our toing and froing. This change also resulted in saving $300 a day, so it was definitely a good decision for us, especially when we aren't massive drinkers, so we aren't really saving on that front either. Because we took full advantage of the breakfast, we found that sharing a pizza for lunch would keep us going until the three-course marathon later that evening. The secondary restaurant on the island is called Open the Grill. This is an al fresco dining experience, offering lunch and dinner by the pool and under the stars. With its Central and South American theming, it made for a great alternative location. But ultimately, you couldn't keep me away from latitude. Let's talk breakfast. First, we begin with an a la carte menu. I learned on day two that after eating something from the a la carte menu, I was still able to eat something else from the a la carte menu. And again, the menu would change every single day, covering a wide range of international flavors. Following the a la carte, it was then time to explore the buffet. Since this stayed mostly fixed throughout our stay, you can't just go rushing in on day one with donuts, yogurts, cheese and crackers, and pancakes. You of course have to pace yourself, adding new flavors each and every morning. This keeps it fresh 
until you can let loose and go crazy on the final day. If you've enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up since it really helps spread the word and is appreciated. Subscribe to be notified about our future travels along with a full review of Coral Reef, getting into the nitty gritty of things not mentioned here, complete with an open discussion about price and managing a Maldives budget. Until next time, thanks for watching Suitcase Monkey.